This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service dedicated to elevating great cinema from all around the globe. Get a whole month free at Mubi.com slash Lauren. Hello. Good afternoon, madam. Your end of the year movie list should be arriving via telegram in about one second. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mm. Indulgent. Let us read. Mm, shit, that's a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to discuss my end of the year 2023 movie watch list, which is very large. There are about 250 movies on there. I will be reviewing every movie in one sentence or less in the order of which I watch them. So starting January 1st, until today, December 31st. I will include rewatches and all shorts and narrative limited series will be quickly put at the end of the video. In these reviews, expect honesty and bluntness because frankly, that is the best way to make your way through life and this world. Um, so without further ado, let us begin. It does baffle me um, as I'm going through this long, very long list of movies the sheer lack of social interaction I had this past year. Um, that being said, let us begin. I am in my childhood bedroom because I am back home in my childhood home in the burbs, as they call it. The suburbs. Okay. I will include my rating with each movie. You know, some reviews, maybe a serious review, maybe a little quip, okay? Uh, you're going to get, they're, it, they're all going to vary, okay? Uh, so here we go. Starting on January 1st, I watched The Royal Tenenbaums. Everyone in this has trauma and depression rooted in a negative paternal relationship. They're just like me for real. The Da Vinci Code. Boring, anticlimactic, overstays its welcome, but it takes place in Paris and that's all it has going for it. Babylon. A love letter to Hollywood and filmmaking that features a version of Tobey Maguire so unsettling it made my stomach start to bubble. Ocean's 8. More like Ocean's Milfs. Am I right? Okay. The Heist of the Century. A decent guide to robbing your local bank, if that's something you're interested in. Dope. Good, not so clean, fun, that I eat up every single time. It's just, it's hilarious. After Sun. I want to pass away. Big eyes. Big eyes? More like big lies. Because of all the lies that take place in the plot of this movie. Right. Luca. If you loved Call Me By Your Name, consider its oceanic counterpart. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. I love it so much. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We could have had Shia LaBeouf as the successor of Indiana Jones, but he turned out to be a scumbag. However, Kate Blanchett plays the villain. I offer you that, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, 21 Jump Street. We're not finger popping each other's asshole. assholes. Assholes. Meanwhile, you two were standing around finger popping each other's assholes. We're not finger popping each other's assholes. Molly's Game. Saw this on a Delta Airway flight to Paris. Loved it. It is a decent guide to starting an illegal high stakes poker ring. Again, if that's something you're interested in, don't commit crime. Pitch perfect. Citizen Kane should be embarrassed after this movie was released because nothing, it will never compare. Nothing will ever compare. Okay. Zoom, 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 zoom. Kung Fu Panda. Why wasn't this nominated for the 2008 Best Picture Oscar? One of my favorite Ghibli movies, actually, from Up on Poppy Hill. Siblings, dating, or both? Watch to find out. This movie is like a soap opera. It plays like a soap opera. It's, it's delightful. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Not nearly as good as its flawless counterpart, Knives Out. It was lacking the Chris Evans in a autumn heavy knit sweater. It was lacking in that department. Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, rest in peace. Chadwick Boseman, you would have disliked 80% of this movie. It was very mid. Again, after sun, I will be phoning my psychiatrist immediately after filming this video to refill my Zoloft prescription. 
BTS yet to come in cinemas. The ones who get it, get it. Was it honestly the best? But the best is yet, what's next? The Social Network. Ayo, masterpiece alert. The Incredibles. It was named after a very fitting adjective to describe the movie itself. Magic Mike XXL, a deeply artistic piece of work on the freedom that breaking the molds of toxic masculinity can bring to a man. Break those chains, Magic Mike. Break those chains. Don't be afraid to do it. The Lego movie, it has better comedic beats than a majority of the comedies made today. Ratatouille, a cartoon rat with more culinary etiquette than 99% of this earth's population teaches the masses about class inequality and the traps of capitalism. Chew on that, literally and figuratively. Okay, chew. Mm. Mm, this ratatouille is so good on that. Oh, capitalism, not good. Okay, book smart. Say what you will about Olivia Wilde, but this being a directorial debut and an original screenplay, the girls were gagged. <sighs> Little Women, um, simultaneously the most beautiful, comforting, heartbreaking movie ever made. Strap in because you will be seeing this eight more times in the video. Okay, um, it my favorite movie of all time. J-Hope in the Box, an in-depth look at the creative process of one of our generation's best musicians as he creates his debut solo album. The Nice Guys. Ryan Gosling in this is the hottest and funniest a man has ever been in the history of filmmaking. Wild at Heart. This movie made me feel physically filthy. Little Women. Blade Runner 2049. One of the best sci-fis ever made, so rooted in humanity and grandeur, and I watched it on a 5.94 inch by 2.98 inch iPhone 11 screen as God intended. Creed. Take notes, directors. This is how you do a spin-off. Forgot to film Howl's Moving Castle. Prettiest man and prettiest landscape ever animated. Cruella. 134 minutes of Emma Stone as Cruella Deville, serving cunt and getting revenge. Sign, sign me up. Thor Ragnarok. I hate that I do have an affinity for this movie. Again, Kate Blanchett as the villain. Please adopt me. Or Jeff Goldblum as the villain. Please adopt me. The casting was very nice in the villain department. Ladybird. Oh. A24 Ladybird screen playbook right behind me. Best movie ever made. There will be several best movies ever made on in this video, and just know when I say best movie ever made, I mean it from the depths of my heart, soul, mind, body, etc. Um, best movie ever made, Lady Bird. Yeah. High School Musical 3 Senior Year. Director Kenny Ortega had a vision and a dream, and he stepped into the Disney headquarters and made history, and for that, I'm grateful. The Heat. If someone ever tried to be as funny as Melissa McCarthy or Sandra Bullock in this film, I fear for them, I do. Because they're untouchable. Paris is Burning, a heartfelt piece of documentary filmmaking that I believe every person should watch at some point in their lives. Um, I also want to read a quote from it that really stuck with me. Um, it was just very beautiful. You left your mark on the world if you just get through it and a few people remember your name. You don't have to bend the whole world. I think it's better to just enjoy it. The Parent Trap, a classic. If I had Chessy the housekeeper to hold me and reassure me in times of darkness, I would be fixed. We'll be reading off of my phone for this one. Jurassic Park, again, one of the best movies ever made. Also, Jeff Goldblum in this may be the hottest everyone has ever been. The first time I saw that scene, where that injured, beautifully tanned being is sweaty, dirty, and panting in the helicopter in his leather jacket, no shirt, something in my brain shifted in a way that six-year-old me could not describe, but I understand now. Okay. Toy Story. Timeless. All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. A documentary, I get it, but I also don't but also fuck Big Pharma, that's what I got from it. Tar, a fantastic International Women's Day watch. Easy A, 
What if I said Emma Stone is the actress of our generation? What if? What if I said that? Oh, I'd be right. La La Land. It's so odd that this movie is listed everywhere as 129 minutes in runtime when for me it ends at 100 minutes. Everything everywhere all at once, the inner workings of my subconscious mind shown on a movie screen. Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb, Archaeology Geeks, you would love this. I'm an archaeology geek. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Operation Fortune Ruse de Guerre. It's the same spy story that we've been fed hundreds of times, but the aspect that those other hundred spy movies lacked? Aubrey Plaza. Stutz. Thought it was a good documentary until Jonah Hill turned out to be a weirdo. The Hunger Games. To this day, no teen dystopian movie will ever top The Hunger Games. Not a single one. The Hunger Games Catching Fire. In regards to my previous review, except for The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Yeah. The clock? The, when she figures out the thing, the whole thing is a clock. Guys. It, nothing will ever compare. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. There's no reason that th there should have been a part one to begin with. It should have just been one movie. This was, it, it's a bit tedious. It's, it's a bit boring to me. And it did take me three tries within the last eight years to finally make my way through the entire movie, unfortunately. The Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 2, Finnick O'Dare, You Will Always Be Famous. Favorites of the Moon, an utter delight of a movie that captures the sheer peculiarities of both people and circumstances that you will come across living in Paris. The Pez Outlaw, I would have never expected to be so locked in and intrigued about a man who smuggled Pez candy toys overseas. I mean, it was it was gripping from start to finish. Notting Hill, I do fear I will never rewatch this. Sorry to Notting Hill lovers. I just, I don't see the hype. The Alpinist, uh, a documentary that gave me the urge to climb a large rock body. Um, like a lot, like a mountain, not Dwayne. Four Adventures of Renette and Mirabel, uh, Paris in the 80s. I would like to go to there. Little Women. My mental health and the frequency of rewatches of Little Women are inextricably linked. Dior and I. If one could have a comfort documentary, this is mine. Colette. Somewhere in her contract, Kira Knightley has a clause that states she can only play roles that require her to wear a corset and talk in an old English accent. And for that, I fall to my knees grateful. Toy Story 2, along with Blade Runner 2049, the opening scene of this film is one of the best sci-fis ever made. Bridesmaids, the food poisoning scene in the bridal wear store solidified this as one of the best comedies ever made. Call me by your name, poetry. Tetris. Hey guys, I was thinking, let's make a movie about the guy who invented Tetris. Oh. Oh, that may be kind of interesting. No, no, no. How about a movie about the guy who sold Tetris's distribution rights? That's good, that's good. Guys, be so serious. Be so serious. I, Tanya, one of the best, most flawless movies of the past decade. Next, Hustlers. Here, we support women's rights and women's wrongs because women are amazing, and it's the least we can do. King Richard. I have an inexplainable attachment to King Richard, the movie, not, not the man. Um, it's, it's a comfort movie for me. I, I really love it. Bullet Train. I've watched this mediocre movie twice in my life, and the only thing I've gained from it is how I need Aaron Taylor Johnson to... The Secret Life of Pets, watched it because it was the best option on my Air France flight home back to the United States. Ocean's Eleven, the people who made this movie actually going back in time to create a prequel 
to Ocean's Eight, starring Kate Blanchett and Sandra Bullock, is very admirable and I, and kind of mind-bending. How do they do that? Ocean's Twelve. There's a bit in this where Julia Roberts' character disguises herself as Julia Roberts, the Hollywood actress who seemingly exists in the time and space of this movie, and that's all you should have to know to go watch this ASAP. It is a, such a fun time. It takes place in Europe, and I like that. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, a gorgeous feat of animation and storytelling. Certified Copy, if you enjoyed Richard Linklater's The Before Trilogy, especially Before Midnight, you would love this. I love Venice. I found this random documentary on Netflix, and it made me really miss Venice and also hate the capitalism that has overtaken it. The Cat Returns, this one I must have written at uh, 3 a.m. Ayo, why do I low-key want to marry a cat? Ocean's 8, uh, what if I said this is actually the best movie ever made hands down? What if I said that? Suga wrote to D-Day, an in-depth look at one of our generation's greatest musicians as he creates his debut solo album, except this time it is not J-Hope of BTS, but it is Suga of BTS. Also, this album was perhaps my favorite of the year. Straight Outta Compton, the best music biopic I've ever seen. Rami Malek needed to take those fuck-ass buck teeth out of his mouth and take notes, is what he needed to do. 13 going on 30, I waited 19 years far too long to watch this masterpiece. Joan Didion, The Center Will Not Hold, this is what got me into Joan's writing and also made me sob uncontrollably, like it was nobody's business. Django Unchained, flawless, just a flawless movie. Love in the Afternoon, Eric Romare's dialogues, settings, Toxic men, film style, will never go unnoticed to me. The Bakery Girl of Monceau, a uh, C previous review. Ocean's 8. The White Tiger. This was fantastic, a gem of a movie, and if you love Parasite, I think you'd love this. The Thief Collector. Present me with an obscure documentary and an art heist plot, and my ass is eaten. No Country for Old Men. Javier Bardem walked into the hair and makeup trailer and said i'll take the edna from the incredibles please and they delivered before sunset shakespeare and company you will always be famous to me and i miss you so much i miss sitting in the upstairs room on an afternoon starting a new book and just sitting for hours and hours listening to the outside noises through the window this movie is so perfect Porco Rosso, name a better duo than Hayao Miyazaki's animation style and anti-fascism. You can't. Knives Out, Chris Evans and your slutty little white knit sweater, it appears I've grown quite fond of you. Daddy Daycare, needed to watch something that fed my inner child and this did the trick. La Collection News, when I find myself inside on a gray, rainy day, it usually means it's time to immerse myself into one of Eric Romare's soft, pastel serene films the karate kid the karate kid is low-key annoying as fuck like the kid himself but his relationship with miyagi mr miyagi is cute scarface miley cyrus could play tony montana but al pacino could never play hannah montana pitch perfect zoom 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 air a bit boring, but featured a Shaka Khan needle drop halfway through that reinvigorated me and inspired me to pull through until the end. Nausicaa Valley of the Wind, a movie that is so rich in visuals and world building that features such a meaningful plot and stunning score. I love Hayao Miyazaki. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. For real thought I was a demigod, in particular daughter of Poseidon which would have literally been tragic because it meant when I fell in love with Logan Lerman as Percy Jackson, it would have technically been incest. But for a good year in fourth grade, I told my peers I was waiting for my invite to Camp Half-Blood, like, oh my god, girl, shut up. I know my classmates wanted to push me into the wood chips on the playground if they could. Um, I could see when I edited this document, and that one was at 4.07 a.m., so a uh, bit delusional, but everything I wrote was true. Um, yeah, I would, I would, I would swim in the local swimming pool and hold my breath for as long as possible because that's what Percy Jackson did. And I was like, well, if Poseidon's my father, I could definitely hold my breath for over 17 minutes as well. 
and I did. Spider-Man Far From Home would have liked it much less if it did not take place in Europe. The Lizzie McGuire movie, not an ounce of country was spared when filming the RuPaul catwalk cover girl scene. Zootopia, animated fox, it appears I have grown quite fond of you. Goodwill Hunting, a movie so real, so raw, so honest, that it made me schedule an impromptu Zoom call with my therapist at her earliest possible convenience. Little Women. These are my sisters and I am a little woman. My cousin Vinny, you love to see Italian-American representation on screen. You love to see it. One Direction This Is Us. It will regress your mind back to your directioner phase and you will not think of anything except One Direction for the following 7 to 72 hours. Blackberry. This movie was so unforgettable, I simply didn't have anything to write about it because I just don't remember it. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, a whirlwind of a movie from start to finish. Asteroid City. Sometimes I feel like Wes Anderson tries to Wes Anderson just a little bit too hard, if you know what I mean, um, but it works for the most part, usually. The Favorite. A tragedy disguised as a very dark comedy. It is very weird, and I very much so love it. Flame and Hot. An extremely unnecessary movie that is essentially an ad for the spicy chip that singes away at your stomach lining. The Avengers, God forbid a woman wants to have a good time and watch the movie that catalyzed the downfall of the Hollywood action film. Sue me. Clueless. I would date my stepbrother too if it were Paul Rudd. Next. Return to Soul. Finding yourself is a messy, never-ending journey and maybe that's okay. Showing up, one of the, if not the, best performances a pigeon has ever made on camera. Ant-Man, God forbid a woman wants to have a good time and watch a movie that further catalyzed the downfall of the Hollywood action film. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Switch and sides, switch and sides. Me, every time Kara Knightley and Orlando Bloom was on screen, they just switch and sides, like which one? If you know what I mean. The ones who get it, get it. The Devil Wears Prada. They teach this in Girl Boss 101 college courses. Joyride. Unfortunately, this was deeply unfunny. Just very, very millennial, millennial humor. Only I, I chuckled at maybe two lines, but the cast was great. Little Miss Sunshine. Hilarious. Touching. Delightful. Simply perfect. The Princess Diaries. A movie that shaped me into the woman I am today. Guardians of the Galaxy. I always hate to admit this, but I really do love this movie. Crazy Stupid Love. This is actually, I tell myself, and I'm right, a sequel um, or alternate ending to La La Land. Jane B by Agnes V. Agnes Varda had a way of portraying her subjects, no matter the subject, so serenely. And that inspires me and is one of the many reasons why I love her and all of her films so, so much. Orlando, I believe based off of a Shakespeare novel, if I'm not mistaken. Very weird movie, but also quite good. And Tilda Swinton is the actress of A Millennium. The Goonies, a classic 80s kids getting into no good plot and it hits the spot every time. It's just good fun. Barbie, sublime. Oh my God, we're only on at Barbie and Oppenheimer. That means it's July. Oppenheimer. If you are looking for a movie about the creator of the atomic bomb, look no further. Luca. Hmm. Yeah. This is my favorite movie. The Beanie Bubble, a story about the inventor of the Beanie Baby and her husband who acquired just a tiny little ounce of power and thought he had the right to tell a beautiful woman that she needed a nose job. And that's all I got from the movie. I kind of forgot the rest. Wasn't bad though. After Hours. This was batshit crazy in a way that only could have been executed in New York City in the 70s by Martin Scorsese. Wally. If you watch this in 4K Ultra HD, it will change your life as it did mine because I watched it in 4K Ultra, HD, 4K Ultra. The Post. Very boring, but I let it slide because I love movies centered around journalism. Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters. And utterly awe-inspiring feat of a film whose set design alone brought me to tears. The Intern, good, clean, heartwarming fun that most likely every single person who has ever flown on a plane has watched at some point in their life. Lady Bird, again. One day I will kiss Greta Gerwig on the forehead for creating this masterpiece of the movie. The Innocent, 
a fun heist movie. The Nice Guys. I've said it once and I've said it again. Nobody hotter or funnier than Ryan Gosling in this. And some of y'all hate on it and I don't get it. Open your eyes, open your ears. Game Night. Prove to me that comedies are alive and well. The Color of Money. A fantastic movie if you're looking for something to fall asleep to. She's the man. That is no man. That is Amanda Bynes. The Woman Who Raised Me. Chelsea Peretti, one of the greats. One of my favorite comedy specials ever. I'm also realizing a pattern that I'm talking a lot about comedy movies at the moment, which probably means that during this time of year, I was quite emotionally down, which means uh, a Little Women rewatch is probably on the horizon, so don't be too surprised. The YouTube Effect. The Jewel Thief. A documentary film like this makes you want to shoplift $700 of merchandise from the local Target for shits and giggles. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Boo. If It's like if a Marvel movie was written, directed, and produced by PETA. Guys, be so serious. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Animated Fox, it appears I have grown quite fond of you. Joy. Jennifer Lawrence, you deserve the world because only you could make a story about the woman who invented the mop interesting deep web i only recommend this if you are a fan of keanu reeves voice as he is the narrator to this for whatever reason the french dispatch not even saying this because my lover uh stars in it one of my favorite movies of the past decade and i think it was also my first movie back seeing in a theater after covid so it, like it has like a nice little space in my heart mo farah no easy mile I watched this because I used to be a competitive runner and Netflix suggested it to me for whatever reason and it was pretty good. Kim Possible sewed the drama. Ron Stoppable walked so silly guys who look like Pete Davidson could run. The Lost Daughter. Olivia Coleman gives such a fantastic performance and the last act of this is one of the best I've ever seen in a movie. Amelie. Hold my hand and say it with me. French people are real. Lilo and Stitch ultimate comfort movie also elvis is a bigger part of the plot than he was in any of the previous two biopics made about him fight club hold my hand say it with me men are real good past lives everything and everyone will come and go whether it be in this lifetime or the next one or the last one and if you're lucky they will stick around for a long time fantastic mr fox it baffles me that I waited 14 years far too long to watch this masterpiece. Rise of, Dawn of, and War for The Planet of the Apes. Kind of an iconic film trilogy if you ask me. Interstellar. A space movie that is so deeply rooted in a human relationship, a father-daughter relationship, that it will have you crying at the drop of its main theme's needle. Simply beautiful. powerful that was powerful the power of the dog oh my goodness rest in peace bronco henry you would have loved troy saban also one of the best dramas actually the best drama of the decade persona this is pretty good i saw it in france and wasn't aware that it was a swedish movie and the subtitles were french so i only understood about 50 percent of the dialogue but it was it was pretty good the handmaiden a very like family-friendly movie about two just two girl best friends like doing best friend stuff lost in translation so aesthetic tokyo in the 90s come on but at what cost why is 18 19 year old scarlett johansson falling in love with a 60 year old bill murray be so serious sofia coppola the prestige if you love plot twists this is the movie for you. Decision to leave, more like decision to stay seated in front of my screen because this movie was fantastic. Ponyo, I love this movie so much that I made a video about it. I love dogs. Wes Anderson makes amazing stop motion puppet films. Pride and Prejudice. Four words, the hand flex scene. Just when he, when he does that, 
just something shifted in my brain the first time I saw it and something shifts in my body every time I see it. Every time. The Incredibles, the best superhero movie ever made. That's why I've already watched it twice this year. Once again, The Devil Wears Prada. This stuff, oh, okay, I see. It has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, Valentine's Day's daughter, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. But what you don't know is that this sweater is not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not that pink, it's actually cerulean. You're also blindly unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar Miller rented a collection of cerulean gowns, and then I think it was, you said, well, wasn't it? Uh, who showed cerulean military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. And then cerulean quickly showed up in collections of eight different designers, then it filtered down through the department stores and trickled down onto into some tragic casual corner where you know Dr. Shams compared to them. However, that blue represents millions of dollars, countless jobs, and sort of comical, hey, thank you. Made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when, in fact, you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. Bottoms. I chuckled. I did. Little Women. Forgot to talk about this one. Boring, but again, that's Gay Blanchard, so. Small, slow, but steady. Rocky, but if it were about a young deaf girl and was far more poetic. Whiplash. If J.K. Simmons did so much as it looked me into the eye, I would cry out of fear. Le Havre. It takes a look at the pure good that humans are capable of showing one another no matter what their background and no matter where they come from us and them movies like this make me frightened to fall in love because what if it doesn't always end well what if it doesn't end nice and good and happy killers of the flower moon bone chilling and just a feat of cinema and lily gladstone if she does not get the oscar we riot. We riot at dawn, girls. We riot at dawn. Silver Dollar Road, a documentary that takes place in North Carolina, which I currently live in at the moment. So I was curious. I was curious. El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Aaron Paul, your hand in holy matrimony, please. Please. No Hard Feelings, a very funny movie that you go into not expecting Jennifer Lawrence to square up with a group of teenagers fully in the nude. Just crazy stuff. Ascension, a documentary that really um, goes in depth to show you how frightening and insane the Chinese factory economy is. Bestsellers, Aubrey Plaza High, where are you? Rise up once again. Also, uh, someone needs to tell writers that if they write an old person into their script, they you don't need to kill them off every time just because they're old. Pain Hustlers, Ayo, bringing the blunt, Emily Blunt, Nicki Minaj. Um, Emily and Chris Evans, hire me as your new agent because this was so bad. Why did you sign on to it? Hey, yo. Bringing the blunt, Emily Blunt. <laughs> Broker, a sensitive portrayal of a found family composed of people on the outskirts of society, and it is so so beautiful train to busan i wept so violently that i dry heaved quiz lady so fun so silly and it features two remy wolf needle drops the color room so meh that i that's i just don't know what to say about it foe ireland gave us two two holy gifts sir sharonan and paul mescal and two put them together in a in a film that is such a stinker should have been a criminal act the infiltrator oh to be brian cranston laundering money that is so true memento i watched nine youtube explanation videos upon finishing this one the hunger games the ballad of songbirds and snakes coriolanus snow can snake into my songbird ballad I'm gonna log off for a bit the Holdovers, cozy as fuck. Frances Ha, in which Greta Gerwig plays Lady Bird in the unofficial Lady Bird prequel. The Killer, really all I got from this was that he went to the same McDonald's I frequented every Tuesday afternoon after my acting class to get a an M&M an 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 McFlurry. Nobody knows, it will break your heart. Take it out, break it, take it out, stomp on it with its fists and its feet and um and and it will linger in your brain this movie for days days after spider-man across the spider-verse watched the second time around on my iphone screen and it still held up which means goddamn it must be a pretty good movie may december the most uncomfortable movie of the year snowpiercer 
I was locked in the entire runtime. Bong Joon-ho, you are so good. The Unknown Saint, a little gem of a movie that I found on Netflix. Uh, it's Moroccan and I was pleasantly surprised. Emily the Criminal, uh, more like Emily the goddamn motherfucking girl boss. Let a girl pursue her passions, God. God. Little Women, mm. I mean, I liked it. Phantom Thread, get a load of this couple. The Boy in the Heron, I would die for Hayao Miyazaki. He is just the greatest mind to ever exist in all of animation. Oh, my little Totoro, right there. Oh, my little spirited away, watch him up. Holes, I watch this every week of my life from the ages of like five to eight. And I was so real for that because it it is, um, have I said this before? It's one of the best movies ever made. Have I said that about any other movie in this video? Oh, I don't know. Dream scenario in which Nick Cage's character appears in everybody's dreams. And I relate to this because like I probably also appear in a lot of people's dreams at night. Home Alone, that poor boy's family was so foul and annoying, it made my blood boil. 101 Dalmatians, no scene in cinema will ever top that intro scene of the Londoners walking their look like dogs. There's just something about the vibe to it. And I think this scene alone made me as a, as a young child be like, I need to live in a big city one day. Get Out, somehow got to watching this quite a few years later than I should have. And my jaw dropped at least six times throughout the runtime. What a crazy thriller. Coco, another movie in which I was sobbing so hard I started to dry heave. Wonka, no offense to my lover, but this movie was violently heinous. And why was the girl's name Noodle? See, as a couple, like we have to be transparent with each other. So like, if he asks how it is, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be honest because that's what people who love each other do. They're honest with each other, so. High School Musical 3, senior year. I was not aware that I watched this movie twice this year. Rightfully so. Gold Brick, good, but quite forgettable, unfortunately. The Grinch, this is the DreamWorks one, the newer one. A lot of you hate on this with a passion but it features Tyler, the creator's incredible Christmas album. And for some reason, Pharrell narrates. Oh, maybe it's because he produced the album? No, Tyler, the creator, produced it because he's a creator. I don't know, it's good, I like it. The Polar Express, haunting. The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Mr. Tumnus, Gateway Drug, for girls who are into men that look like Timothy Chalamet. Klaus, dare I say my favorite Christmas movie and one of my favorite animated movies ever made. Godzilla minus one, say it with me. Godzilla is a woman. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. There's that one character, the lady who like is homeless and she lives in Central Park and like she has all the pigeons. There was a guy when I lived in Paris who lived outside my apartment building or like he lived in my apartment building but he would also always like sit outside in one of the flower beds. He was like her, like he had all the pigeons would flock to him except like he may, he would like kiss the pigeons very passionately and like share bread with them like he would like nibble a little piece off and then like share with them and then like eat a little piece and he would like kiss them and like snuggle with them it was very unsettling and weird but like i hope he's doing good and i hope his pigeons are doing good bonjour la la land it's self-sabotage every time i click play self-sabotage inside out what is going to happen when they release inside out 2 and the horny emotion shows up News from home, very pensive, very slow. It kind of reminded me of one of those films you see in a museum, like on an exhibition, just like a dark room with the film playing that kind of like, you're like, what is going on here? Like nothing really, but in the best way. Theater camp, uh, funniest movie made in the past five years, 10 years. Shiva Baby, it induced six different anxiety attacks within its 78 minute runtime and I've seen it before so I knew what was coming but it's still just, whoa. Poor Things, a really nice weekend watch for the entire family. It's a nice little movie, movie day out. And last movie of 2023, I believe that clocks in at around 240 something, 270 including the limited series and shorts I watched but the last movie Barbie and to that I say I love movies and that was my year in movies as always thank you very much for watching I will see you very very soon love you so much and if you are in the market to watch a great movie as I did many last year maybe consider checking out the sponsor of today's video movie 
Let me tell you a little bit about them. Mubi is a streaming service dedicated to elevating great cinema from all around the globe. They offer films from iconic directors to emerging auteurs. There's always something new to find. I've discovered so many new directors and genres even from Mubi. On Mubi, each film is handpicked by their team of in-house curators. Discover the best of cinema at your fingertips streaming anytime, anywhere. I'd like to recommend a movie that I mentioned in this video that I found through Mubi, Favorites of the Moon, directed by Osar Losiliani. It's a film that takes place in Paris following the life cycle of two objects, a painting and a set of china, and it's just an absurd comedy focusing on the interrelationships of the various people and hands that these two objects come into contact with. It is rather slow but I think it worked perfectly for this film. There's minimal dialogue but I think it was the right decision as the story is told just so perfectly through facial expressions and landscapes. It's just a very it's a very enjoyable time. It's a very interesting concept and quite unlike anything else I've ever watched and I highly recommend if you enjoy even just looking at Paris in the 80s. You can try Mubi for free for 30 days at Mubi.com slash Lauren. That is M-U-B-I dot com slash Lauren for a whole month of great cinema for free. Thank you to Mubi for sponsoring today's video and go watch a good movie.